Welcome back to Math 432. We're talking about choice. So here is our example, our last example for this series. A host invites four a host invites four couples to a dinner party. He gives some of the guests fish. And how many ways can he do this? So here's a bunch of fish. He's going to give them to some of them. So maybe he gives a fish to that penguin and maybe to that penguin and that penguin and that penguin, and that's it. Maybe he keeps all the rest of the fish for himself. So the question is, how many different ways could he do this? Okay, so this is an unconstrained choice problem. Let's solve it before we add an interesting constraint. So in the unconstrained problem, we can think of this in a few different ways. So how many fish is he gonna give out? So let's let K equal the number of fish given. And then what does k range from? So it could be zero, he could let nobody have fish, one penguin a fish, all the way up to the most number of fish that he could give out, um, sorry, I don't know why there's an errant comma there, is eight, he could give one to each of the penguins, okay? So we could write down his solution there, and when he does it, so if he gives out zero fish, then he has to choose which of the zero penguins to give it to. Well, there's one way to do nothing, right? If he gives out one fish, he chooses one. If he gives out six fish, he chooses six of the penguins. So we can write this down for each K, right? He has to make a choice of eight, choose K. So we can write this down as the sum from K equals zero to eight. That's the range of our fish. K has a, a interpretation in terms of the combinatorics here. And he'll have to take among his guests, choose who to give the fish to. And that's an expression and we could evaluate that. We could just write it down, there are nine terms and we could work out what it is. But there's another way that he could have thought of this problem, right? What he could have done, so this is just sort of deciding, oh, you get a fish, you get a fish, you get a fish. Another way the polar bear could go about it, that's gonna give us a, a different answer, the same answer, but a different way to think of it, is he could just take all of the fish that he has in his hand, so take all you know eight possible fish, whatever. Suppose he has an infinite number of fish. He's a very happy polar bear. And he can just go to each penguin and say, fish or no fish, fish or no fish. So that means here I have two choices for the polar bear, right? To give the fish or not, give the fish or not. So when he does it that way, when he just goes around thinking of each penguin one at a time, each penguin comes with two choices. So this is gonna be two choices for each of the eight fish. So here's an identity that's always true. If we sum up all of the binomial coefficients, we get a power of two. Now let's make this problem a little more exciting and let's add a constraint. So he's gonna give the penguins a fish, but my penguins come in pairs here, so let's use that. Um, but not both in the same couple. So for some reason, he's a very greedy polar bear and he doesn't want to give out that many fish. And so he decides that if I'm going to give a fish to you, then you don't get a fish, okay? So maybe you get a fish. Maybe neither of them gets a fish. That's fine. This guy gets a fish and this guy gets a fish, okay? But if I've given this one a fish, this guy doesn't get a fish. That's what my constraint introduces here. So the constrained problem is going to have a different solution, right? We're definitely going to have fewer solutions. Let's think about it in the same ways that we thought about this simpler case, okay? Let's think again, K is the number of fish given. So K equals the number of fish given. And in the constrained version of the problem, he could still give zero fish, one fish, but what's the most number of fish he could give? Well, he can give at most one per couple. So he can give two, three, or four, and that's it. Four is the maximum number of fish he's gonna part with. So we're gonna have that summation from K equals zero to four. But now what goes here? He doesn't take each penguin and choose four of them, right? Because he can't choose both of these guys. So he takes each couple, right? Each couple, there are four couples. So he chooses which couples are gonna get the fish. And he has another choice to make. So maybe I'll write a little more detail on this one. This is um, choose which couples get fish. 
But now once he's chosen, okay, the red couple's gonna get a fish, he has two options. He can give it to the one on the left or the one on the right. So he's gonna have two choices for every couple that he's chosen. So it's two to the K. Again, that K is because that's how many couples get the fish. So there are two choices um, for every couple who gets fish. But just as we did up here, we found there was another way that we could count this problem, okay? So let's see what happens in this paradigm when I count it a different way. So how do we do it up here? Again, we always go back to our model example that's a little simpler to get inspiration. So here we're summing over this variable of K, which represents the number of fish. So here, what did we do? We went to every penguin and we said, you get one or you don't get one. And there were two choices for every penguin. Now, we don't wanna think of the penguins as individuals. We wanna think of them as partnered up, as couples. And now we take the same thing and we consider one couple. What are our options to do with fish for this one couple here? Okay, well, we can either give a fish to this guy or to this guy or to neither. Those are our three options. We now have three options, fish, fish, no fish. Okay, so that gives us three options. And how many times do we make this choice? Well, there are four couples to choose from, so it's three to the four. And it turns out that what we've just discovered are two very interesting identities by counting in two ways. So two to the n is the sum from k equals zero to n of n choose k. There's nothing special about eight here. Similarly, if we have an even number, then three to the n is equal to the sum from k equals zero to n of n choose k times two to the k. We'll often find this that when we're summing binomial coefficients, we're often gonna get powers. Powers of two are standard, but we can get other powers by thinking about things in interesting different ways. We'll see a lot more examples of this as we go into the next unit on the binomial theorem.